Welcome to another Century Show and Tell. About a month ago, we launched performance issues for all early adopters, and we got a lot of questions. Dan Lee, who's an engineer on our performance team, is going to answer all of them. Check out the links in the description to learn more about performance issues and help us decide which types of issues to detect next. Hi everyone, this is Dan Lee from the performance team in Toronto. As of last Thursday, performance issues are live for all EA organizations. And during the last all hands, Matt from my team has walked us through an awesome demo where he fixed the real performance issue that we found in our code base. I'm not going to repeat his demo, but I wanted to use this opportunity and answer some of the questions that we got from the centaurs that checked out performance issues. Those were great questions, and I think there's a lot of value in surfacing the answers to everyone here. It is a new feature, and it makes sense to spend more time understanding how it works. Okay, now let's go through these questions. The first question that we got is, how can I turn on the detection of performance issues? You don't really need to do anything. As long as there are transactions that are being sent to Sentry and an organization that sends them is a part of the early adopters program, the detection should be enabled. Performance detection is ran on incoming index transactions in ingest and no additional step is necessary. What kind of M plus one DB queries make a performance issue? M plus one query describes a general pattern where there are numerous DB spans that try to make the same query. We want to capture the most useful and severe performance problems, so we had to introduce some thresholds around that. There are two main conditions to have a performance issue created. There should be at least five repeated identical DB spans, and their total duration should be at least 100 milliseconds. Once those conditions are met, a performance issue gets created, or an existing issue gets updated with a new event details. Next question was, what are cross-transactional performance issues? Performance issues are fingerprinted based on the spans involved in an N plus one problem, specifically parents, source, and repeated spans. Because transaction name isn't a part of it, it's possible to have the same performance issue that manifested itself in transaction events with different names. Here's an example of an issue like that. If we click into the tag view, you can see that there are two transactions. These transactions are affected by the same performance problem because they have the same underlying spans that caused it. So far, we've only found two cross-transactional issues, and we'll keep an eye on how the number, number changes when we improve the detector. The next question was, how can I filter for performance issues in the issues feed? From what we've seen, performance issues tend to have a lower event count and might not be displayed at the top of the feed. To filter for performance issues specifically, you can search for them by using an issue category performance filter, like shown on the screenshot. And the last but not least question was, does Discover Search work? The answer is yes. If you want to leverage full Discover Search functionality and take a deeper dive into exploring affected events, you can use issue short ID to filter. Follow the open and discover button and you should see the transaction events. I hope you found this helpful. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, you can ping us in project performance issues or discuss performance channels. Thank you.